recording. Hi. Um, well, none of you guys are, uh, are, I can't see any of your, your faces. All of you guys are blacked out, um, which is fun. Hi, Teresa. <laughs> and, um, so glad you all are here today. Thank you. Thank you. If you guys want to be unmuted now while we're saying hello, or if anyone has anything to share or any questions, like feel welcome, feel welcome to uh, unmute and ask questions, or if anyone has any shares or anything like that, you know, I'm, I'm so happy to, um, to start off with communal energy. Um, Thank you for inviting us. Yes, thank you so much, Bernita. You've got a different view of the uh, library. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every week, every week, uh, a different view, a different background. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, I'm always, you know, I'm going to tell you guys something because um, uh, every time I channel, and I'm talking my many years of channeling, every time I'm always a little nervous beforehand, it, like a uh, stage fright. So um, uh, so it's nice to have friendly faces to welcome me. Um, the librarians have a lot to express and because they don't want me to get in the way. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> they are keeping me like they're keeping me in the dark I don't know like they told me they're going to talk about what is the um why do we have three-dimensional existence and um they're going to talk about why it exists and what purpose it serves but I have no idea what they're going to say I don't know. So they're just going to knock me far out of the way so that they can talk about this stuff. Um, they're going to let me remain as one member of their collective so that I can be learning along with you. If they knock me too far out, then I won't know what they're talking about. Um, they are, um, but it'll be interesting. So when they first come in, um, you'll feel as they first come in, I'm going to be like being pushed out as they're coming in. So when they start first start speaking, I'll be in there a little bit, but you'll see, you'll see me like drifting, 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 and then you'll feel it's pure them. You'll also notice when they talk, they go back and forth between saying I and we, because to them, it's all the same. It's all the same. It's, you know, I and we are one, but sometimes one will speak out a little bit and they'll speak in I, and then they maybe only have one or two sentences to say, and then it's the we again. So they, they do flip back and forth with that. And, um, um, and one thing um, I need to mention before we go forward, and I'll email everyone about this as well, is, um, so I'm going to speak today and next week on Saturday, but then after that, the librarians will speak on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Um, they don't care when they speak, but my daily, my weekly schedule has just gotten overloaded, so I need to, like, arrange things in a way that I'm not overwhelmed. And so um, if any of you said, no, I joined, you know, I'm here for Saturday. I can't do Wednesday. Just if you all can get in touch with me. We'll see what we can figure out. Okay. Okay. So um, they want me to mention all of the things that's happening on our planet now that has us so terrified they're a little bit delighted because it's to them it's like 
Um, you know how when someone has an issue or an addiction, sometimes they have to hit rock bottom before they go for a better lifestyle, healthier choices? They kind of see humanity as going through this. They see us as we have been given every opportunity, time and again, time and again, time and again. And now that we're at rock bottom, they see us finally saying, oh, look, there are other options out there. So um, if they seem in any way unsympathetic to what we're going through, it's because mostly they want us to get the heck through this so we can get to the good stuff. But um, they're not delighted by the suffering of innocent people, but they are delighted that we're finally getting a wake up call. And I just wanna make that very clear in case anyone thinks, What's up with those lack of compassion librarians? And they're like, all they are is compassion. So how can you differentiate them from one side of compassion to another when everything they have is like filled with benevolent love? Their primary interest is to teach us actionable, applicable lessons. You know, so they're they're not going to be the ones who give like lovely general statements to uplift your spirits if you want that there are plenty of other extraordinary um individuals and collectives that channel through other people the librarians they're like we're going to teach you how to do something so you can build a better humanity um so they're they're excited well before we start does anyone have a question or anything I have a question. Uh huh. In your in your email, you made a comment. I'm just trying to get find your email. You made a comment about talking about reality. Librarians talking about reality mm -hmm. and explain it to us. And I don't know if this is a relevant question or will be relevant afterwards or not. But each individual person's reality is different. Yes. And it's different because your reality is based upon how you synthesize information, but it's also based upon how an individual takes previous experiences in their lives and that forms the basis of the way that you see things. Right. Is this and something the librarians talk about? You know what? I am going to hand that answer to them because I hear them already saying, tell her. And I'm like, no, you know what, you guys, you <laughs> tell her. <laughs> so they are hopped up and excited like in a good way they're like you just asked a whole group of professors a chewy question <laughs> yeah well i've always been someone who preferred uh okay um i say what i think and i have a really hard time doing this touchy feely stuff around <laughs> it so right i'd rather just have something just give me the facts just tell me what it is exactly that's perfect and the librarians are all into that okay. uh, yes yes Thank you. And patty did you have a question yeah i did bernina um i'm hoping the light and i think you kind of touched on that i'm hoping the librarians can give us guidance insight on what to do to heal to change not just heal but to change forever the racial issues in this country and around the world. Mm -hmm. I have a friend in Minneapolis who's again live streaming his walking around the city and it's heart wrenching. Well actually today it's good because people are out there cleaning up. Mm -hmm. But the la it's it's just heart wrenching to see what's happening and what's how how many more people need to be killed at the hands of white police officers before this country wakes up. Yeah. So I'm hoping they can give us some guidance on what can each of us do as individuals, as the group that we are, 
to make a difference, to change the world, for, to make it better for everybody. Yeah, that is everything they're all about. Thank Absolutely. you. Yeah. And um, before the librarians come in, I will just mention, because you're not seeing it much in the headlines, which is like, just, excuse my language, just pissing me off. But, um, but I have fact-checked the information I'm going to give you. Number one is um, the people who organized the, uh, uh, the demonstrations were specifically and purposefully organizing peaceful demonstrations. Right. Mm -hmm. They were met with layers and layers of fully armed military who were aggressing upon them. And that was a key instigation in a peaceful demonstration turning into right. riots of, of pain and rage. Right. If the police had not been called three layers deep with weapons and tear gas mm -hmm. fully ready, if instead they had been met with support from mm -hmm. their political community, right. A very different situation may have played out. And two, and this has been fact checked, and I've seen this before, like uh, 30 years ago in the Adams Morgan riots, mm -hmm. I lived there and I saw this happen then. Busloads of people who mm -hmm. came in doing rioting and looting. And I don't know what percentage, like I was told um over 90 percent of the people arrested for looting and rioting were people who had been bused in they were right. not the local community right all of this was put in the news to create an impression that black people are out of control they're right. violent they destroy their own community they're little more than beasts you right. know mindless animals <clears throat> We are, we are being given a political agenda mm -hmm. to try to put our minds against the very people who are saying, will you please help us? Mm -hmm. All right. Right. So and I that's what my friend is saying, too, and that a lot of the people that were arrested <clears throat> in Minneapolis and St. Paul are from out of state mm -hmm. and are white supremacists. Exactly. Exactly. So They have their own agenda, as, just as you're saying, Bonita. Yeah. So um, this is all before the librarians come in mm -hmm. because um, when it comes to this sort of thing, they're gonna speak on a slightly higher plane mm -hmm. on lessons that are applicable. Because of course, when they look at us and what's happening now, they see the same situation having played out all across our planet, you know, for thousands and thousands. Right of years they don't see anything different so what they would like to do is teach us what can we do to create a new reality right. and mm -hmm. step away from this reality thank you um, that would be lovely yeah yeah so i just wanted to mention that because they are very concerned and they got so much to say oh my god they make they give me headaches with all that they want to share <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes I feel like I'm getting 50 lessons at once from them. <laughs> Some of the lessons that they're giving that, they, that are, are important are, um, oh my God, about how each of us can very comfortably separate from our physical body at will. Hmm. And that we can meet soul to soul, that we can form our own mini collectives with people who have frequencies that harmonize with ours. So like everyone who's here tonight, if we knew how to follow their instructions, instead of meeting on Zoom, we could all separate out of our bodies. Now we're not astral projecting because we would still be in our bodies, but we would be extending out and meeting on a higher plane where none of us are physical and we just see each other's souls. So their thought is if everyone sees each other soul to soul, no one cares what gender, what race, what anything you are, because they're seeing the pure you and you're connecting with the pure. Um, and down the road, they're hoping, whatever, they're a little ambitious 
to teach people how to do this so that we can start our own becoming collectives on humanity. And also to help us stop feeling so overwhelmed and depressed by what's happening out there when we are super empowered to manifest good, good stuff. Um, so they, um, you know, and they definitely feel like all the things that we think are the most important, they're like, we're so focused on this tiny detail, we're missing like everything around it. So a lot of times what we think is the thing that must be fixed, they're like, that's actually nothing. Because if you fix the, these other things, that issue doesn't even exist. That's a byproduct of other things not being in place. So um, they, uh, like I said, okay. So they're, they're uh, literally like knocking on the top of my head. Going, Hello, is anyone in there? <laughs> so, okay. Okay, we are, we, we are in here. Okay, we are so, so happy. We are flowing in. We are still fluid, but we are, we are, we are here. We are here. We are connecting with you as well. So please open, open your minds, open your hearts so that we and your personal librarians may connect with you. And as today's session continues, you may be receiving information that we also tell you tonight when you sleepy by time, the work that you are doing now will continue even further in your dream time. So, we invite you open your minds, open your hearts, open your senses, and you will start connecting with your personal librarians. The more you become acquainted with your personal librarians, the more you will find comfort connecting with our realm. And it will be very pleasant for everyone. We thank you for joining us today. And we are, as we said, very excited. We have much to share. And we understand your distress with things happening on your planet right now, every single day, new headline in your papers, your news papers, every day new issues are coming up. Why do you think this is? And do you think it won't get worse? Because of course it will get worse before it gets better. This is because humanity has resisted so long, so long you have put much pressure of oppression upon your race, upon your society. And now that it is bursting free, it is bursting all the way to kingdom come. But do not worry, because when the pressure is gone, things will settle to much better way of being. We promise you that.
little human spark needs to give herself a haircut. This bushy is in our way. So we apologize for our distraction. <sighs> you speak of the racial disparity among your culture. It is horrendous. It is old. Yes, you must speak your voices. Do not be silent. Do not be silent. You saw this happen in your Second World War if those who were silent had spoken up early, then that would not have been such a global disaster. It would have saved much distress. We encourage you, speak your voices, speak your truth, and reach out your hands to your brothers and sisters. Do not sit by and think, something must be done. At this point, of course, you cannot go safely and march in the streets. And you cannot physically reach your hands to that many because you are in your quarantine time, but you can reach out. You can use your words. You can express your beliefs. You can come to the support and aid of those who need it. This is a time when you personally take action. You will feel much better about yourself and you will be a role model, a positive role model to others who would like to speak up but stay silent in fear. We, hmm. So many are thinking, what can be done? Someone must do something. Use your voice in compassion, and that will give those who want to do something the courage it will be like food to them to then step forward and know that they are not alone with silence around their lone voice. So if you wish for something to be done, but you do not wish to be the one who does it, which we understand, then create the environment to support those that will go forward. We hope you understand this. It is important. We are feeling your energies. It is like a guitar, violin, a harp that needs to be tuned. An instrument capable of great music, beautiful songs, but out of harmony with itself. What will bring you to harmony within yourselves is when you know that you are living your truth on all levels. When you know that what is in your heart is also expressed outward, and when you know what you express outward is the fullness of your personal truth, not the truth that you feel the times are forcing you to say, but the truth that naturally pours through. You are to sing your song, not a song dictated to you. Do you understand? We hope you do. Yes, yes, yes. You bring joy to us with this cry out. Yes, you must live your truth. If you go into your physical universe, 
you will hear the song of the universe. It's quite beautiful. And you think, many years, human thought, there was no sound in universe, only silence. And then you recorded, you said, what beauty. And what did you find? The Tibetan monks had been hearing it all along. They knew how to sing the songs of the universe. And what are the songs of the universe? They are the natural truth pouring forth. They are pure truth. That is why it's such beauty. That is why your beloved pure monks then hear it because they are pure and beauty and they meet there in this harmony. You see, everything we've said so far ties together. What is the point of a three-dimensional, solid, dense, physical reality? It is where you have more density, more resonance, you create a new song. We already have the songs of other dimensions. We do not need more of that. Love is fine, but when every dimension is love, 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 your song has only one note. If you need more notes, so it's not always like a tea kettle, all the time, then you need more dimensions. You are not the most solid or dense dimension. There are some that would envy you for your light and buoyant nature. Think on that. There are some that are so dense, they would become drunk in this atmosphere. Just from all the giddy joy, once they release their very densestness. So, you don't not need to say, oh, poor us, we're just humans. We're just 3D, oh. No, you do not need to pity yourself. You are a beautiful note in the grand symphony of all being. Without you, we would have less music. And you might say, music? Yes, you may say all reality comes to a song. This song, for many, begins with birth, with source. And source is pure love. So many are created. They come out, look at us. We are pure love. We are pure love. Everyone is love. And they go drift someplace where it's very easy. Love, love, love. And we continue with love, love, love. Over time, someone goes, hmm, is there more than this? And eventually they find their way to, you know, different shades of love, of joy, different shades of happiness and fellowship. And eventually someone goes, hmm, can there be more than this? And they say, well, what can we do to make more? Well, we can't do it in this environment. This environment can only support so far. So we make new environments. And who do you think does this? It is not source. Source can only live in love because that's all source is, pure love. So we have what you call Mother Earth, Gaia. She is not, she, we say, because the divine feminine and you only have two genders here. So we do he, she, but understand if you were like other places and had nine or 12 genders or other places had one gender or no gender, we would have a different conversation. But for your 
human ears and your ability to hear what we're saying without having your brains explode, which would be a very unpleasant experience, we will keep it where you can easily understand. And then, who knows, grow from there. So imagine divine masculine is giving birth and divine feminine is creating, fashioning existence of birth. So everything's created from love, from source. And then your Gaia says, we're tired of just love. We want more. Let's make something more interesting. Let's create new realities. This is very much like your Adam and Eve story. Adam's very happy just to be, and Eve says, hmm, maybe we can learn something. So it's very similar, very similar. Do we have a question there? Okay. So, so, oof, we go off on a tangent. So we need to create new realities because otherwise we get bored. Your universe is a very new reality. You think of this universe as old, we think of it as the blink of an eye. There are many other dimensions and universes and realities that were made before we got to the three-dimensional. We had to practice, you see. And there are so many dimensions that had to be made in all varieties. And your universe, you are not the first effort. We practiced several times. Several times we made universes that did not go quite as planned. But this one we think is good. We think this one will stay for a while, which is a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, we thank you. Yes. We are very pleased with it. And when, when humans are a little more evolved, you will get to meet more of your brothers and sisters in other parts of your universe, and you will have much fun. But yes, this should happen in many of your lifetimes. It should happen not too far away. So we have. God, source, creator, divine creator, who's happy to just create life. But what is each life? A small aspect of our creator, correct? So each of us, each of us, ourselves included, is one small aspect of God sent out to have experiences and eventually one day we all come together as one, for indeed we are small aspects of one. We are to God what you are to your soul, what your dreams are to you. Do you understand that? Or should we explain? Please explain. When you go to sleep at night, you have a dream. And if you are in your dream, while you are dreaming, you think this is the reality. You forget that you are a dream and that you are an aspect of the dreamer. And then you awaken and go, oh, that was just a dream. Okay, on to my real life. And then you go through your real life saying, I am all there is. I am me. I am it. And then you die. Your life is gone. Your body atrophies and the part of your soul that's in you goes back to your soul. And your soul goes, Oof, that was just a dream. That was just a dream. And now I'm connected with myself again. And then your soul is evolving and experiencing and saying, I am me, I am all there is. 
and you grow and you learn. You have many lives, you have many experiences till you reach the point where you are fully complete and you say, there's really nothing else. And then you return to God and you realize I was only ever a spark of God all this time. But understand, when you return to your spark, your soul returns to the Godhood. Every dream you had, every life you lived, every experience of your soul is still there complete. None of you is lost. You're not absorbed to God like, like you eat a radish and it turns into digestive stuff and goes out as waste. No, you remain yourself and you are one with God and one with everyone. Does this make sense? Yes. Absolutely. This is a very long process. It will not complete in your lifetime or the next, or the next, or the next. By the time you are ready, to return to your origin, you will be ready. It will not be forced, it will be organic and the very natural, comfortable state. So do not worry that you in this life are no more to God than your dream is to you because how wonderful this is you in this life are made of all your dreams not just your sleepy by dreams your daydreams your thought dreams your heart dreams your hopes and dreams you are master dreamers so all of your planet understand is a dream, not a dream of God, who just sits there birthing life and then absorbing back through love, of course, but a dream of the divine feminine that you call Gaia, who said, well, God, thanks for all this energy and life. Let's make things with it. She's very crafty. So Gaia calls upon all her friends and says, let's do something. Let's have an adventure. Let's create realities and see how many variations of this song of life we can compose. So Gaia takes all of this beautiful life and love birthed by her partner and she plays with it she weaves it together she hybrids she she just makes beautiful artwork one of which is this gorgeous universe a lot of beautiful songs in this universe some of the most beautiful are here with us today, and that we mean we refer to you. You are beautiful notes, just need a little tuning. And the tuning is when you love yourself and you have faith in yourself. And as you love yourself and have full faith and you open up, the song comes out and the song is then experienced by those around you. They say, I like that song. I open up and sing back to it. Now, some may sing with sour, harsh notes and you're like, ah, maybe you sing with someone else. 
and some sing beautiful harmony with you and you sing together. We are speaking both metaphorically and literally. It is okay to sing with your friends or sing while you are home. Sing, sing, sing is good because that opens up your spirit. So we go off track. <laughs> Back to the delightful young lady who says, how do we manifest reality when each person has a unique reality? Yes. Again, like composing a symphony, each instrument has the unique notes they play. But when they come together, you have beautiful symphony. You have Beethoven. You have many nice songs. If we take the reality of each individual person and weave them together, you have the common reality. Here is the issue. Where you have a common accepted reality, you have boundaries that then individuals are told, you may not go beyond these because it is not real. And then you force your reality to conform to the common reality. What we encourage you to do is be uncommon and let your reality flourish. What this does is it disrupts the common reality and others are forced to rethink or possibly for the first time to think. This is how you turn followers into individuals. So as we all have our unique perception, our unique reality, and each of us does, of course, we know we have read your books and they are delightful reading. However, Everyone's reality hits what you call a glass ceiling, which is the commonly accepted reality. It's also what you would call the low hanging fruit. So you must go above that to pick higher hanging fruit and say, so this, the common accepted reality is the baseline. It is not the ceiling, it is the bottom. And we must always go above to find the extraordinary or you will not reach the truth. So we encourage you, do not accept what you are told by anyone but always go forward and say, can there be more? Is this all or are there exceptions? What else is there? We encourage you to ask questions and see how far you can take it. There is not a single teacher or expert on your planet who knows all the answers. So sometimes you will have to explore yourself, which is why we are encouraging your personal librarians to connect with you and for you to connect back because they can connect you to the resources that fill you with illumination and enlightenment that otherwise cannot be found on this very dense, limited reality. When you say the common reality is not good enough for us and you reach up and up and up, you are also raising the common acceptance. So you are defining the new reality. And this is what we expect of you. 
you are not followers and mindless think non-thinkers you are the creators of the new symphony you are the creators of the new reality you are the ones who understand that if you want to you can levitate you just need to learn how and then believe you can do it you are the ones who understand if you want to you can walk through walls you can visit other planets you can magnetize your hand and call metal to it you can connect with your guides and talk with them you can go backwards in time and have a do-over after you oops i didn't mean to say that thing there are many things you can do and you may not know yet how to do it but you know that once you learn how you will be able to do it you already have the trust and faith you just need the technique and the technique is just lessons given to you does this make sense mm -hmm. yes yes Good. does anyone have questions at this moment yes yes what is your question um i often dream i can go through the wall in my dreams and I know in my dream the technique is not to go directly through the wall, but go through the crack through the wall. There you go. <laughs> so, is that what you're talking about? This Once you the, learn the technique, then that you can do it. That is a very good technique. You know there's already a break in the wall, so you just get your energy through that. Another technique is to spread your cells out so far that they go through the pores of the wall and then come back together. Another technique is you make the wall vibrate at a higher frequency and you then your frequency so that you can walk through it and it will not realize you're there. There are many variety of techniques and the one you mentioned is an excellent technique. Thank you. It is our pleasure. We are so happy to be here with you and your excellent idea. And does anyone else have any questions or requests before we go forward? Very good. So let us discuss reality. You'll see that your oceans are polluted, but you know that you can change the pollution in the water by sending love to the water you know this because you have seen scientists do this you have seen holy people prey upon water and all the pollution is gone you have seen people go to where there is garbage in the water and levitate it out and put it in a bag and take away so if they can do this then you'll know it can be done now you have the reality of the earth is polluted and there is nothing i can do about this because i'm not in the middle of the ocean this is a reality that you each have you also have the reality I can astral project to the ocean and levitate the garbage out of it. You also have the reality of all of this is beyond my ability to do anything. And the reality of this is a dream 
and I can be the, the lucid dreamer who makes all the difference. Even within yourself, you have many realities that seem to be at conflict with each other. Your lesson that we give to you, your challenge is honor all your realities because each of them has power within you. When you bring all your realities together as one, they do not need to be one belief or destroy any of the beliefs. You bring them together also as a collective. Each has wisdom of its own, advice and insight to share. Bring them together as a committee and say, what will we do about this? Each reality will say to you, oh, we must do this, we can't do that. And then you say to them, thank you for all your advice. You must stay together as my action team, and this is the action we will do. And then you go forward. We advise to you, do not attempt first time out to do the big clearing. If you wish to clear the ocean of all pollution, before you try that, maybe try a glass of water. So you take classes, studies on people who know how to purify water with energy. You develop your techniques and your comfort, but always knowing your end game is to cure the ocean of all debris. You may join forces with others along the way. So you support each other with your practice. And then when you finally are ready to go forward and clean all the oceans, maybe stopping first at puddles and ponds and lakes and rivers, by the time you get to the ocean, you are an extraordinary force of people who are very powerful and empowered and suddenly the oceans are clean. This is how you bring your divergent realities, each with your own perspective, and within yourself, your many perspectives, and harness all of that energy to give extreme support to a unified goal. Do you understand this? Yes. Do we have questions? Can we help the oceans even when we leave this body in another dream? Oh, of course. There are many out there right now. Your planet would be so much worse without their help. And don't worry, things will get better. Many who were willing to see the harm to your planet thought it was inevitable, but now you are already seeing once you start harming, the planet returns very fast. And there are now equally many who say, now that we know it can be better, we are not willing to return to where we were. So things are already, already in action. It will be good. It will be good. Your physical reality, even in your universe, there is not just three, four dimensions. In this planet, you have chosen to live in three, four dimensions, but even this planet, long ago, there were many more dimensions. Did you realize that? Once no. Long, yes, long. Sorry. No, no, we love, we love hearing from you. 
So long ago, even when humans existed, there were many more dimensions here. But the more you rely on, we're humans, we're superior, blah, blah, blah. You know, we are the, the best ones ever and everything else can go suck a rotten egg. The more you have that. <laughs> We are so <laughs> we should not have made that joke. We brought the whole <laughs> Okay, we are sending her back. So the more you have this attitude, the more you blind yourself to all that is good around you. Imagine this, two people are walking down the street. It's a beautiful day and this person is saying, oh, so beautiful today. The birds, I see a rainbow, the flowers. And this person is going, I'm so angry. I hate my boss. I'm going to backstab someone at work. I need power, I need authority. And these two are walking together down the street, very different walks. This one sees many things, and this person is a bit of a jackass. So they have two different realities. Now, humanity has been a little bit like this other person. Not all humans, of course, humanity. And as we said, the common reality is the one that oppresses you from reaching to your better self. So the common reality has been a little asinine and oppressive. So these many other dimensions finally gave up and went elsewhere. They said when humans are ready to connect with us, fine, until then we got other things to do. Now some animals and some plants are very comfortable with them. So these other dimensions can be here for other beings. And there are small pockets of humans that connect well and see a much more pleasant earth than the common reality allows for. However, you are the dreamers. Invite the other dimensions to come back. They have not disappeared. They have more atrophied. But with nourishment, they can spring back out. Such as the dragons once were resplendent and abundant on this planet. The young dragons could be brash, but the older dragons are very powerful and wise. However, humans were not kind to dragons, so many of them exist in another frequency and took a long nap. They slumber or they are elsewhere in the universe. Like you think your planet is the only place they go to. How silly. But when you provide an environment that supports their desire to be here, they return. Just like if you want the pussycat to like you, you put a little milk out every day and pet the cat. But if you take away the milk and throw sticks at the cat, don't be surprised that the cat goes elsewhere. So put out the milk and call out here, dragon, dragon, dragon. You'll find they come back and where the dragons come, they bring tremendous essence of other dimensional energy with them. You know the fairies are here. They're here very much, but 
they don't show themselves to people so much beyond age three or six because people haven't when you you smell bad to them you have an energy that is unappealing for them and you smell very bad to them so and the smell is not from you know your your body the smell is from your anxiety angels no oh, fairies fairies do not care for anxiety they care for purity so when you give them the smell of purity and fun they show up that is the little milk bowl for the fairies and where the fairies come the gateways to their dimensions open up we told you last week when your planet was formed emissaries from every dimension and every frequency came and helped with the formation of your planet and they put in essence of their home their people their essence into your planet so your planet has the potential to be all dimensions and connect with all beings but you're clinging to this common state of reality has taken you from up here resplendent and exciting connecting with all to down here only us people no one else is deserving now you did not know this of course your souls know it which is why part of why you are here now to help expand it but in this life you did not know this however now you do know this so you can do something about it and it begins with you saying i will no longer let society tell me what is real i will let my heart I will let my angel, I will let my, li my, my librarian tell me what is real. We think this will make your lives more enjoyable as well. Does this make sense? Yep. Does it make sense to anyone else? Do, do, does it? Do we hear? Do we hear much people yes. saying yes? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. 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 This makes us very happy. So when you think about it, if you do not do anything else with your day beyond, I am expanding my state of reality and I am honoring my ability to dream all my dreams to whatever i want then you have spent a very good day okay You were given a planet of infinite possibilities. Do not let limited-minded people tell you what you can do with it. You can do with it anything you wish. But again, you must tune your instrument within you so that you are harmonious with yourself. So you need to do healing, releasing. This is one reason why we say don't hold grudges, do not carry pain, because all it does is sour your manifesting ability. It puts bad notes in your song of creation.
and each of you is a maestro capable of composing the most beautiful symphonies of reality. Our host is becoming tired, so we must step out. Is there any request or question? Do librarians have a name? We are the librarians. We individuals may have names for you because humans enjoy names. For each of us, we recognize each other's frequency, so we do not need a label on it, but that is the same as a name, is it not? Did mm -hmm. you know your souls have names and your guardian angels have names, but when you speak with any of us or your soul and say, what is your name? The name you will get is the frequency that you are at this moment able to connect with that to whom you are speaking. As your skill and experience and frequency expand, at some point, say your angel will say, now you may call me, and they have a new name. Because your ability to who connect with their frequency has increased. And they're giving you a label for your connection. Mm. There is great power in these names. It's not a power you have over someone. Oh, I know your name. I have power over you. It is power for you to say, this is where we connect. This is a frequency. And what do I have to learn from this? On my, my, on my path of ever expanding presence. Do not worry if you ask a name. Oh, did I get the name right? Is this the name? Oh no, what if I think it's a name but I made the name up? Don't worry. Use whatever name you like because as you go along, the name may change anyway. So, because it's how we connect. That is absolutely marvelous. Thank you. This is, of course, our pleasure. Do we have any more questions? Then we have one quick challenge for you, which is tonight when you are going to sleep, we ask you to formally invite both your guardian angel and your personal librarian to come and sit and have a conversation with you. You may choose any environment you wish, sitting around a campfire or in the library in an angel garden. We do not care. Just invite them. Maybe both will show, maybe one or the other, or maybe someone else. Whoever shows is the perfect one to show for you tonight. And then talk with them, talk with them about our experience today. Talk with them about whatever you wish. You do not, you may find the conversation goes interesting places and allow this to be in your mind as you are falling asleep. Do not worry if you think you are making it up in your head because eventually you will drift to sleep and it will take over. 
You're not worried if it's real or not real. You're going to sleep. It does not matter. But it will be interesting and you will be creating a frequency opening that will allow us to visit you while you are asleep and we can share good information and healing energy for you. So if you wish to do this, we hope you will. We invite you to do so. Okay. And now yes. we, wonderful. We will see you tonight. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we thank you. For us, this is very delightful. We are so happy to be in the field doing the work. We are tired of research, research, research. Now we are <laughs> active. <laughs> we hear someone thinking a question that we will answer. Someone is asking, what is it like to be a librarian? We are hearing, what is a day in the life of a librarian like? And we wish to answer this before we go back. We have a wonderful existence. We read a lot. We get to play in a library forever. How exciting. But we also are teachers. We go to many realities to teach and help raise up frequencies. We will say, you'll think those pyramids were made by aliens? No, they were made by humans, but how do humans know to make pyramids? We are honored and pleased to say that we would visit certain people and help them. Of course, this was contracted before they came to life. And we would teach them techniques so that they could flourish your society. We visit every society in every state of being, every dimension, and help whisper in their ears little things to help their society evolve on good, healthy paths. We also have schools of education here. There are many who come here and study with us. And of course, we will remind you that you are among the few beings who choose to be disconnected when you're in life. It makes you very challenging to work with. It is much easier to be with beings who are non-physical and also a collective to help them with their evolution. We work with the angels and they go out and they do much healing and cleansing. And we work with all the ascended beings in all the dimensions, all the races as they go from one level of being to an evolved state of being. If you have a collective that is benevolent and they have gained all the experience, so their karma is completely clean with the collective and the individuals, then their frequency shifts and they change to a new kind of energetic collective of beings that then it can be confusing. Their senses can be overwhelmed and we help them with the maturation with their new and expanded capabilities. We are very busy and we have a great deal of fun. So this is a little bit about our lives 
And of course, we are so happy to be here on this field trip to help you as you are among the first few truly awakening humanity so that humanity can evolve to its next state of being and have expanded sensibilities that are benevolent and harmonious with many states of reality, including yourselves. Imagine a time on your planet very soon where it is clean and lush and healthy and all people are kind to each other. Animals do not need to fear from humans. There is no need for anything that creates pollution and there is no poverty or cruelty. There are no dictators and all the rivers are allowed to flow uninterrupted to the sea. That humans are able to fly or swim down deep without any problem. And you may connect with all the beings from all realities with ease. This time is coming and you are those who will help to evolve everything to be there. We hope this does not overwhelm you. It's intended to inspire. It does inspire me. Yes, me too. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Wonderful to hear that. Thank you. The only thing you need is full faith and the courage to be your truth. With that, you can change everything. We have full faith in you, and we see your potential. It is magnificent. Just think already, you can do something we cannot. Already you are your souls, you are non-physical, and yet you get to be this entire experience in the physical. We can only be in the physical in a short time with a borrowed form. So you understand already, you are extraordinary and you have a skill that many beings admire. So honor yourselves and look forward to your resplendent days to come. Now we must go. Thank you. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> <sighs> really? Oh my God. That was awesome, Bernita. Thank you. Very powerful. My exact words. Awesome. Yes. The first thing I see when I come out of it is the clock. And I'm like, no way. No way. I thought they talked for only about 20 minutes. And as they were flowing out, and I was being pulled back, and I'm like, Guys, what a rip off. <laughs> 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 we
was it, one of the things was interesting for me, Bonita. I had the TV on because I'm, a, you know, I love the space program. And while they were talking about the universe and the other worlds, was when the shut was when the shuttle launched. Oh. And there were these amazing pictures from the space capsule of the universe. It's like, how appropriate is that? It was just such wonderful synchronicity. I loved it. <laughs> that is so cool. Thank mm -hmm. you. Oh. Oh. oh my God. Well, thank you. I'm going to have to go back and watch this because <laughs> I'm like, my brain is scrambled. The only thing I really remember is somewhere in there they cracked a joke that they yeah. cracked themselves up so much I got thrown back in my body and they're like, no, 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 and they shoved me out. I'm like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> they're hilarious. They were very much so. <laughs> they love to joke around. They really <laughs> do. They they they're like no need to be serious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my word wow so <laughs> do you usually need a nap after you've done something this intense um how do you restore yourself yeah i'm i'm going to be useless for the rest of the day um except tonight at midnight i have to go on a road trip um that will have me because we i have to go somewhere and do something that's like six and a half hours away and then come back and i don't get to like you know eat at a diner or stay at a bed and breakfast or anything so um so normally after this, I would just be like a waste case, sleep through the night and be fine tomorrow morning. But tonight I'm going to be, I'm going to have to take a little nap and then be on the road going nonstop till about 8 p.m. from like 1130 tonight to about 8 p.m. tomorrow. Wow. Yeah. So, but mm. yeah. <laughs> so, um. But that's okay. I know I'll have plenty of guides with me and I'm allowing time to like sleep in the car along the way as we go along and I have a picnic pack so I don't need to, you know, I'll just smell bad when I get up. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's part of why I'm like, I need to reorganize my schedule because I am spending too much time just being exhausted. And um, so so this coming week on saturday which i think is the third no this coming week on saturday the sixth I uh, think. Okay. yeah the sixth i don't know if they're going to speak or not on the sixth but um because they had said originally today is the last day on saturday and then we're going to move to a week and a half on wednesday um, and then as I started this before I started, they're like, wait, 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 we can't have people go 10 days without hearing from us. And then just now they said, oh, no, no, it's okay because we'll do more daily things. We'll do a whole bunch of little daily things to get people ready. Um, what they want to start talking about is a little bit of the history of planet Earth so that as we get to the point where what's happening in the here and now, you guys realize that like when we're you know when you're in the middle of this situation you see it from like where you're at with everything around you and you can't see the big picture mm -hmm. so they'd like to give a little more of the big picture so that what's around us in the here and now is not so overwhelming <laughs> um so i guess what they're saying now is from now to wednesday the 10th they want to give a lot of little daily lessons like not tomorrow <laughs> um but little daily lessons so that when they come back everyone's like okay all right let's do it and also so they can keep me a little more tuned up um so that um i don't annoy them so much when they speak through me <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> I did like what they said about how we have limited the common reality reality to the common perspective and all we have to do is break through it and that's where the true reality is just waiting for us i like that yeah so yeah, i feel like that empowers each of us to look at what reality do i resonate with like they were saying about the symphony that's like then saying well do i feel like i'm a violinist or a flautist or uh the percussion like i feel like they're empowering us to each go after what little line of reality we wish to follow um yeah i think we all do as humans think about these realities uh, we don't necessarily share them um they do come out in movies and fantasies and books you know so they're there so everyone is thinking these realities yeah how do we manifest yeah. them? that's the thing how do we manifest them in our daily lives like they said you know start local go global yeah. start with manifesting little things in your daily life and you know releasing whatever interferes with that i guess that's what they're talking about about tuning your instrument you know if you are like tuning they kept showing me someone playing the harp and then like turning little knobs on the harp to get the perfect pitch. So uh, releasing anything that interferes with your ability to hit the harmonious resonance of what you want to manifest is like tuning your instrument. So all of the self-doubt, gone. <laughs> all of the like, all the mean things we say to ourselves, gone. <laughs> All of the feeling like we are the ones in charge of everyone else being happy, gone. Hmm. Yeah. <sighs> well, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Bonita. Go get some rest. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with your trip. Thank well, you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you all have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful day. Um, and um, we have a homework. Yeah, you do. <laughs> and I will load this video today to the uh, online school. And um, uh, I will also load up last week's and this week's to my YouTube channel, which is Benita Woods on YouTube, just because, you know, they, they want this part just to be out there. Like they haven't gotten into their like nitty gritty lessons. I think they're more worried about in the future when they're teaching people like, this is how you manifest new reality. Yeah. You know, they want to make sure that it's people who are working with them, not, you know, people who then will like harm themselves or, or, you know, they, they want to make sure that, but I think um, last week and this week, it's general and lovely enough that we can just mm -hmm. put it out there. So, and also so you guys can access it again without any issue. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I have a question, Benita. Uh-huh. I get confused last week and this week about how to link to the session. So this, I finally did find the Zoom link today. Mm -hmm. So it's on Facebook, is that right? It's on your page on Facebook? No, um, all of this will be accessible, is accessible really through my online school. So if you go to my website, Bonita Woods, B-O-N-I-T-A-W-O-O-D-S dot O-R-G, and you see online classes or there's also a link beneath a channel the librarians there's a program that you can buy you can either buy a one-off ticket for a particular channeled event or you can buy the it's just like twenty dollars a month and that gives you full free access to everything the weekly sessions everything 
I put the link to the program or like for today, if you went into the, the, the program, like, okay, you paid your 20 bucks or your membership and you go into it, there's a page there that says link to the program mm -hmm. and you uh, click on that and it brings you here. I'm now going to download this video and where it now says link to the program, I'm going to remove that and put the video. Okay. So if you go, like if you have the monthly membership, you'll see last week is like lesson one is May 23rd. Lesson two is May 30th and the videos are there and they have a bunch of short videos. Their goal is to have like at least five or 10 video, like between five and 10 short videos every week to help people go into further detail of the last channeling and prepare everyone for the next channeling. Um, but, okay. <laughs> but their Thank you. expectation of what I can manage yet, it's still a little like, I'm like, oh my God, I'm still in 24 hours a day. And even with time bending, like you can bend time, but it snaps back on the other side. So it's not like, <laughs> no. Maybe you can ask them to help you with the website. Maybe they can do it while you're sleeping and traveling tomorrow. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and I've got to run. It's been great, but i got to go. See you later. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I want to make you. a divine benevolent being laugh hard. It's ask them for help with a website. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank Thanks. you for the rest. Thanks. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Everyone. Thank you.